what is observing by us that you are yourself having in a uh, triple whammy. On the one hand, current account deficit. On the other hand, fiscal deficit. And third, trade deficit. I don't know how you will be reconciling the fiscal deficit with the growth of the economy as has been, as has been committed by this government. Second thing, supplementary demand for grants of this scale indicate a gross miscalculation on the part of the government on expected expenditure. It also undermines parliamentary control by going above and beyond what had initially been a sanction. In so far as fertilizer is concerned, I have already, I have already indicated that the NPK ratio refers to the proportion of volume of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium in fertilizer. The ideal average NPK ratio is 4 is to 2 is to 1, but the ratio increased to 7.7 7 is to 3.1 is to 1 in 2021-22. The ratio was 6.8 is to 2.7 is to 1 during Kharif 21, which got further distorted to 12.8 is to 5.1 is to 1 during Kharif 2020. While farmers tend to use fertilizer in a balanced ratio, changes in prices due to policy changes end up upsetting the balance. So there may be the distortion of the balance that I have flagged your attention. Again, fertilizer shortages is concerned. Indian government issues that there is no fertilizer shortage in the country, but there is a sufficient and there is a sufficient stock to fulfill existing demand. Yet farmers across the country have been facing shortages of fertilizer for both Robi and Kharif sowing seasons, including Rajasthan, Arjun Meghavalji's state high, Himachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Haryana, Odisha, Tamil Nadu. The increase in fertilizer prices was partly responsible for 27% drop in paddy sowing during Kharif this year. The government is meanwhile on the path of disinvesting or shutting down early PSUs in fertilizer sector. On the other hand, the import of DAP and NPNPK complex fertilizer increased year on year by 45.2% and 76.1% respectively in April, October 2022. There is a slogan being uh, propagated that one nation, one fertilizer which was launched in September 2022. But that goes against that standing committee recommendation. The committee remarked that the farmer should have the choice to buy fertilizer from different brands. The only way to ensure different efficient use of subsidy is by directing it to the farmer's account. However, under the One Nation, One Fertilizer scheme, all fertilizers are supposed to be sold under the Bharat brand name. This will lead to power margins for manufacturers and leave them with no incentive to increase production of quality fertilizers. In order to increase their brand loyalty, the manufacturers will now need to focus on marketing processes instead of focusing attention on upgrading systems. Now, another issue. No update to the list of beneficiaries under NFSA, National Food Security Act. Section 9 of the Central Food Security Act 2013 requires that the list of beneficiaries be updated on the basis of the latest census data. With the delay in the 2021 census, the list of beneficiaries under the scheme is outdated by 11 years if the list of beneficiaries were to be adjusted as per the directive of the Supreme Court, there would be an increase of 10 crore more beneficiaries under the scheme. So I think the government should take into account the concern of the people and also the observation made by the Supreme Court. But um, what is very, I mean, intriguing to me then, what is concerning to all sections of our population is that the Reserve Bank of India increased the repo rate for the fifth time in financial year 23 in an attempt to tackle inflation. Always to tackle inflation, you are resorting, you are resorting to increasing the repo rate. Why? Why this kind of mechanism being adopted by you? On December 17, 7, 2022, the RBI increases monetary repo rate to 6.2%, a 35 basis point hike from 5.9%. The repo or policy rate is at its highest level since August 2018. The six-member monetary policy committee arrived at this conclusion after an assessment of the evolving macroeconomic situation unfolding in the country. 
In September 2020, the central bank had increased the repo rate by 50 basis points to 5.9 percent. My up, Sadan ke jo satta pas ke MPs hai, my unko puchna chate hai. Ki repo rate barhane ki chalte ke aam logo ko parishaniya bharte hai ya kamte hai. Aap khud batao. My batana chate hai, my bista se nahi jana chate. My sab mote mote mudde char paaj mudde rakhna chate hai ki it is impacted where this kind of increasing repo rate will have impacted. First impact, impact on borrowers. Second impact, impact on EMI. Impact on existing EMI. Impact on housing markets. Impact of rate hike on equity investors. Impact on mutual funds. Itne sare impact honne ki baad, aapko kya ye nahi lagta ki humare ye jo repo rate is tarikhe se dharal le se bridhi kiya ja rahe hai इसका बुरी असर हमारे इकोनॉमी है इकोनॉमी में होगी हम लोग यहां परेशानी को झेलना पड़ेगा तो हमारे ही अर्थनीति का क्या मूल्य रखते हैं आप जाओ मिडिल क्लास लोअर मिडिल क्लास जिसके पास जाओ छोटे मध्यम लोग लोग उद्यमी जिसके पास जाओ ये रेपो रेट की चलते इनकी आर्थिक तंगी बढ़ रहे हैं मैं आप सर्वे करके देखो मेरे बात पे भरोसा ना करके आप सर्वे करके देखो the price of essential commodities have been constantly rising. Essential food items have been getting more expensive for a long time under this government. The main drivers of inflation have been prices of food, fuel, clothing, and education. I think in earlier occasion also, we have pointed out whether our economy has been undergoing stagflation. I think our economy is on the cusp of a stagflation. Economy is stagnant. Inflation has been growing. Unemployment is not visible. So certainly, we are witnessing the morass of financial of plight of the entire country. Annual rate of wholesale inflation was at 12.41 percent in August 2022 and 10.7 percent in September 2022, compared to a 30-year high of 15.08 percent in April. 2022, while this is maybe a relief to many, but states like Kerala are still reeling from the effects of price hikes. Retail inflation in India September 22 hit a five-month high at 7.41 percent. The figure crossed the Reserve Bank of India's upper limit of 6 percent for the ninth month. Inflation in October 2020 is still above RBI's limit of 6.77 percent. Headline inflation is forecasted to be 6.4 percent in 22-23, while the inflation rate has peaked, the Indian economy is expected to take two to three years to return to an inflation rate of 4 percent. This implies that the RBI will continue to maintain higher interest rates over the next five years, which are critical in kick-starting economic growth required to move away from the pandemic slump. Madam, already, already, I mean, uh, media people have been highlighting that industrial output has measured by the index of industrial production slump to a 26-month low of minus 4 percent in October on the back of a contraction in manufacturing and consumer goods. NSO data, according to NSO data, it indicating weak exports and sluggish consumption demand alongside the continuing weakness of small and medium enterprises. We are eager to know as to why the central bank could not keep inflation within the targeted 6 percent upper limit for the three consecutive quarters. Madam, aaj bhi hum ye sunne ko mila hai ki humare chin ke saath takra ho raha hai. Mai us bisha pe jana nahi chate. Sensitive mood hai. Nahi jana chate. Mai nahi jana chate. Mai sirf yeh kahna chate hai. Hindustan mein 3560 aisa company hai jahaan ka director chini kaise ho sakta hai. Adhirajan ji, aap chair ko address karo. Aap chair ko address karo. Nahi, nahi. Chair ko address karo. Sir, मैं ये मैं ये इस मुद्दे के अंदर नहीं जाना चाहते मैं ये कहना चाहते कि 3560 हिंदुस्तान की कंपनियों ने जहां चीनी डायरेक्टर कैसे बन गया चीन का साथ हमारा ट्रेड किस किस तरह है हमारा एक्सपोर्ट इंपोर्ट ट्रेड बैलेंस चीन के साथ किस तरह पे है मैडम थोड़ा सदन को जानकारी दिया करो मैं और भी एक बात करना कि इत्तेफाक से इस साल इस साल नोटबंदी की छठी साल हो रहे हैं नोटबंदी की छठी साल ये डिमोनेटेशन कहूं ये डिमोनाइजेशन ऑफ इकोनॉमी कहूं ये मुझे सोचना पड़ेगा डिमोनाइजेशन और डिमोनेटाइजेशन क्या है ये 2016 में 8 नवंबर एट 8 पीएम 
a organized loot of this country took place. Cash in circulation at that time was cash in circulation at that time was 7.6 lakh crore. Now it has been increased to 30.88 lakh crore. That means 72 percent high. Whether it was committed at that time that we are moving towards digital economy, black money will be wiped out, terrorists will be finished, and fake currency will have been done away with. My, sing, sim, my single query to you, whether the objectives of demonetization have been achieved or not. Because as per your RBI report, it is palpably clear that not a single objective as was enunciated during the demonetization has not been achieved so far. See, Swiss Bank, Swiss Bank in its report stated that in the last 14 years, Hindustan mein sabse jada Swiss Bank mein Hindustani ke logo ko paisa jama kiya hai. Iska kitna, kitna rasi? 30,500 crore. Aap kahit hai ki bhrashtachar ko duri karan karne ke liye demonetization ki jururat thi. Trik hai. Ye corruption index kya hai Hindustan ki? 79 thai, abhi 85 chale gaye. Ye hamari nahi. Transparency International ki report hai. Fake currency or sun liye. Fake currency 500 denomination ki jo fake currency 102 percent. Eight minute. Two one six. Yes, please meet. Two one six kata hai ki the debate on the supplementary grants shall be confined to the items constituting the same and no discussion may be raised on the original grants nor policy underlying them safe in so far as it may be necessary to explain or illustrate the particular items under discussion. What do you have done? Sir? Yeh demonetization jo hai, yeh supplementary demands of grants mein ka hai, sir? Kaun sa item jo hai demonetization ka hai? RBI policy ka kaun sa hai, sir? Aur dousra unho ne unparliamentary word jo use kiya, demonetization. Rakshasi karan yadhi hindi mein ka hai, rakshas kaha se parliamentary sabd ho gaya, sir? Yes, sweet. Desi liye inko rokiya, sir. You please continue. There is nothing unparliamentary. I think. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, no. That, that I will examine. That that word I will examine. That word I will examine. As far as Rule 216 is concerned, supplementary demands in respect of almost all the demands, all are either in one way or other way. It is connected with these demands. So the. That, that we will examine. That we will examine. Demonetization is also affecting the economy, the state of affairs of our economy. Definitely, this is a matter of sub it is nothing out of the purview of the supplementary demands for grants. But as far as the other word, we will examine and. It is under also. It is mamla house. Yes, let us say. Yes, almost all, almost all the issues which we are discussing, almost all the issues which. Sir, they think that demonetization was demonization. <laughs> no, 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 please. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yes, I have said. No, no, please. I, I am not uh, dithering for me. I, I am not escaping from my body. Yes, no, no, I please, said. please. That we will like. This is my observation. See, Sarbo Gyani Nishikan Dubey Ji, Aapki jo bakta po diye the, Usme dekhi hai, Aap isme ye supplementary demands me aap thi, Isse bahar gai thi, Aap khud. Yes, yes. Adhiranjan ji, please, now yes. conclude. Sir, 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 please. 